Hey guys, Andrew Hyder here at Vance Outdoors, and today we are showcasing the new Timney Alpha Glock Trigger. We're fortunate enough that Timney donated a trigger to us to uh, do a, a product video on, so thank you to Timney for that. Um, so we have a Gen 3 Glock 19 in front of us, um, and I want to talk a little bit about the factory trigger that comes in these guns. So they're rated at right about five and a half pounds, give or take, depending on what scale you use. So we have an unloaded gun here. So what I want to focus on is if you look at the factory trigger, so you have your trigger shoe safety, and then you have your pre-travel. So this is where you take up to start to disengage the two internal safeties, and then you have the trigger break. So even as the trigger starts to break, it creeps off of the striker. So again, it is a combat gun. It was designed for duty use. There's nothing wrong with it but this trigger makes it a lot better. So let's tear into this and install it. So unloaded firearm, we're gonna field strip it, okay? We don't need the upper at all. We're gonna set that off to the side. We're gonna do a detailed strip of the lower. So we're gonna start with the, we, we're just gonna put on a Wheeler engineering block, same block we carry here at Vance Outdoors. Um, Glock takedown tool. You can use any punch you want. I just use a factory actual Glock takedown tool. So we're gonna start in the back and we're just gonna push the pin out of the frame that holds the ejector block in, okay? And then I'm going to take the top pin out for the locking block. And then if you grab the slide stop and start to apply pressure, you can move the slide stop around a little bit and then pull it out, pin comes out, okay? Take a flathead screwdriver and you can start to pry up the barrel locking block, and then I'm gonna pull that out, set it off to the side. At this point, the entire fire control unit just pulls out of the gun. You can set it down. Set the frame off to the slot aside just for a few minutes here. So now that we have the factory fire control uh, group in place, or out of the firearm, we're going to take the trigger bar out, set that down. The trigger return spring we're going to get that out of the ejector block and set that down. You will not be using those two items again. What we're going to do now is install the um, trigger return spring block from Timney, and it will actually click into the ejector block. Underneath, there's going to be a screw. In the Timney kit, they actually supply you with all of the tools that you need to install this, install their parts. So we're gonna back that screw out just a little bit. Okay, make sure that that is down all of the way. And there is a little shim that comes in the kit. And that slides underneath that bolt. It's a little tedious to get started. Let's see if I can do this this way. May not have that backed out quite far enough. There we go. Started, okay. And then I'm just gonna take this supplied Allen wrench and make sure that that shim is pushed in all the way. At that point, then all we're gonna do is we're just gonna tighten this up. Okay, so the ejector block is now done. We're going to take the new trigger bar with their aluminum trigger shoe that is flat and trigger shoe safety. We're going to install this into the ejector block. Now we're going to drop this as it sits back into the frame, okay? You're going to want to capture the trigger bar into the ejector block housing as you are inserting it back into the frame. Once you have this done, I'm going to put the rear ejector block frame pin back into the firearm just to keep that from moving. Once that is done, the kit comes with two supplied springs. The silver one you use with a factory connector, the red you use with a minus connector. So since we have a factory connector in this gun, we're gonna use the silver spring. So on the trigger shoe itself, there is a, a, a tab that this spring sits on and the shoulder sits on the ledge on the trigger shoe. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull this spring back, drop your ejector or your uh, barrel lug 
block in place, which is then going to capture the spring. At this point, we're going to put the top pin in place to hold the ejector block, or the, uh, the barrel block. You're gonna pull the, that spring tab down to get that first pin over top of it. Just gonna push that in a little bit more. Okay, now we're going to reinstall the slide stop. So there is a cavity for that to go into. You are gonna be putting pressure up against another spring. So as you do this, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have everything lined up. I'm going to take my Glock tool and just make sure that I have everything there. Start to reinstall the trigger pin. It locks into place. At this point, you can actually function check the gun. So I'm going to apply a little pressure forward, make sure that the trigger safety disconnects and that I can actually fully range the trigger bar inside the frame. And it works. So now we're going to grab the slide. We're gonna put the slide back on the gun. Okay, lock it open, verify it's unloaded. Function check, safety works. Safety works, new trigger. Disconnect the safety. Lot less pre-travel. Much easier break. Safety, pre-travel, break. This is an awesome trigger. Not changing any other springs in the gun, not changing reliability of getting a light strike um, or touching any of the actual safety features. Phenomenal trigger from Timney. Uh, we have these in stock at all of our uh, Vance Outdoors locations. Stop in, check them out.